Hello again. In the second part of our lecture, I will talk on electromechanic and electroacoustic analogies. Most of the electroacoustical systems, for example, loudspeakers or microphones, contain mechanical, electrical, and acoustical elements. If we want to describe or design such kind of systems, it is very useful to unification or uh, to unify the symbols or the elements. Therefore, in this case, we use the analogies between electrical, mechanical, and acoustical elements. After that, it is possible to apply electrical circuit theory to solve such kind of problems. At the end, our aim is to get a schematic representation of the system. For example, the map of London underground is a good example and was designed by an electrical engineer. First, I will talk on the electromechanic analogies and I will start with basic electrical elements. We have three basic electrical elements. First of all, inductor, of course, capacitor and resistor. Also, we use conductance, as you can see in the slide. And we have, of course, field variables like electric current and electric voltage. I use the underline for the complex variables. And if I define the electrical impedance, it is the ratio between the voltage and the current. If I talk about mechanical elements, again we have three basic mechanical elements. Mass, spring, we define of course as stiffness or compliance, and at the end dashpot, damping. The field variables in this case velocity and the force and the mechanical impedance can be defined as, you, as the ratio between the force and the velocity. If we want to unify these elements, we have two different analogies. One of them is the mobile analogy, the second one is the impedance analogy. In some literatures, mobile analogy is also called as admittance or inverse analogy. In the mobile analogy, the force corresponds to the electric current and the velocity corresponds to the voltage. And in the impedance analogy, force corresponds to the voltage and velocity corresponds to the current. In this lecture, I will focus on the mobile analogy. And if we start with the first mechanical element, mass. Mass corresponds in the mobile analogy to the electric element capacitor. And if we apply a force to a solid body with mass, the mass will accelerate. According to Newton's second law, we know that force is equal to mass multiplied to the acceleration. And if we describe it as in complex way, in that case, we can of course use the velocity and the angular velocity omega, 2p times to the frequency. And then we can define the mechanical impedance. The second element, second mechanical element is the spring. And in that case, the mechanical symbol for the mechanical compliance is the spring. When we apply a force to a spring, it stretches. And according to Hooke's law, we know that uh, force is proportional to the actually stiffness. And in that case, of course, this stretch amplitude, the stiffness spring constant or compliance describes this proportionality and the difference in the velocity of the two ends. 
the mechanical compliance is analogous to the electrical element, in that case, inductor. The third mechanical element is dash pot, and in that case, we are talking on fluid friction due to the viscous medium, and we know that force is proportional to the velocity with a damping constant, and mechanical element dash pot corresponds to the electrical conductance. In this slide, we see the various symbols which are used for electrical elements, as you can see, and at the same time uh, for mechanical elements, for inductor, for capacitor, for resistance, and at the same time for the mechanical elements, for compliance, mass, and dashboard. Now I would like to talk about electroacoustic analogy. And if we talk about acoustical systems, it means that we are talking the physical words of pipes, orifices, or diaphragms. And in that case, we would like to define them. And again, we have three basic acoustical elements. First of all, acoustical mass. Second is the acoustical spring. Again, we can define using stiffness or compliance. And in that case, it means cavity. And third one is the acoustic resistance. We have again some uh, variables, for example, sound pressure and volume velocity, which is directly dependent on the sound velocity using the area. And the acoustical impedance can be defined as the ratio between the sound pressure and the volume velocity. If I start with acoustic mass, in that case, we are talking about an open-ended tube. Open-ended tube means acoustical mass. And in mobile analogy, it corresponds to the inductance, as we can see in this slide. The second element is the acoustical compliance. It, it is actually, it can be defined as cavity and it corresponds to the capacitance. And the third element is the acoustical resistance, and it uh, corresponds to the open-ended narrow tube with porous material, and in mobile analogy, it corresponds to the resistance. If we start with the first element, acoustic mass, and talk in detail, we see that, first of all, the diameters of the open-ended tube are very important for the mass, in that case, length and, of course, the diameters. For the second aspect, for acoustical compliance, the volume of the cavity is very important for the uh, acoustical compliance, it is critical. And the ratio between the sound pressure and the volume velocity is, of course, important for the impedance, for the acoustical resistance. I would like to talk with an example about this issue. Therefore, I have selected a very well-known example, Helmos resonator, for this aim. It is used in technical acoustics or room acoustics or uh, also in other areas for the attenuation or generation of sound. It is also in, uh, used for room acoustics, also in many musical instruments. For example, if we think about the flute, guitar or violin, of course, we have Helmholtz resonator. The underlying theory is quite simple. A good example is a water bottle. In this case, we have, of course, the neck, and the air within this neck acts as a mass. It means that the mass of air within the neck oscillates forward and back, and the air in the cavity acts as a spring, 
in that case. Therefore, the resonance frequency is depending on this mass and at the same time compliance. And of course, as I said that this is an example for Helmholtz resonator. And if I gently actually blow this bottle, you will hear the resonance frequency. And of course, this resonance frequency is depending on the neck and also the cavity. I can change the cavity dimensions, of course, if I drink the water. And now we will hear another frequency. As you can notice. And if we want to, of course, calculate this resonance frequency, we should calculate first of all mass. And the effective length of the neck is longer than the actual length of the neck. Therefore, in most cases, we use a correction factor. And in, then in that case, it is 0 0.85 multiplied by d. At the end, I would like to uh, suggest some further reading, reading. And particularly in this literature, you can find much more information on electromechanical, electroacoustical analogies.